my life is usually all over the place, so it makes sense that my draft is also all over the place. I think, I'm pretty sure in my running vlog I said I wasn't really going to talk about this book much, but here we are. This is turning into less of a writing vlog and more of a save the cat vlog. What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Today is my June writing vlog. It is June 2nd and I thought I would film this clip before tomorrow, June 3rd, when I get my second dose of the Moderna shot because I feel like I'm not going to vlog for like a couple of days after because I have heard that it does have some side effects so I just want to prepare before I get that done. But I have some updates and some things that are going to happen this month so let's get into it. If you saw my writing up Date, I talked about reading Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. This is a book that a lot of people on AuthorTube and just authors in general really love and I hope to get good use out of it. I really have not watched any videos about it. I really am just going off the recommendation from Aiden Thomas where they said that this is such a good book and help them write their book. I trust his recommendation and I'm excited to read this so I will be talking about it throughout this vlog as well. Since since my writing update, I have made changes to my High School Musical retelling. If you don't know, I am writing the first draft of my High School Musical retelling and you can go and watch my other writing videos where I talk about it. And so what I'm doing right now is I have a notion spread that I've started but I'm just putting everything into a Word document because it's just easier for me to see it in an outline form on Word. I have all of the information for this book including character profiles and the outline in a Notion spreadsheet and I also have the characters in the software I use, Dabble, but I just decided to put all of the key information and the outline into a Word document. So I'm just doing the outline again basically. It's just going to be easier for me because what happens when I write is that I just go in and start writing a scene. So what happens is when I finish the draft it fucks me because then everything is all over the place and basically that's my brain. Welcome to my brain. My life is usually all over the place so it makes sense that my draft is also all over the place because I'm a pantser and I just put everything everywhere and I need organization. There's a part of me that is organized and I need to put that into my book. So I I just made a whole new outline and I already have possibly changed the play again. So this is the fifth time. I went over my friend's notes that she sent me and she gave me some productions I could do including Shrek the Musical, The Addams Family, Little Shop of Horrors which is her favorite, um, but I think I'm gonna go with The Addams Family or maybe I just won't announce it at all because if I just keep changing it everyone is gonna be confused but so am I. So at the beginning of the year I had a plan to just finish it in two months and that's not gonna happen. I don't even know when it's going to be finished. Maybe I will finish it in November for NaNoWriMo but I just don't know. I think I want to just focus more on Breaking the Ice which is my hockey book and I really love my high school musical retelling. Like honestly I think about my character all the time. Like Jonah is constantly on my mind but I also have Gabe and Breaking the Ice on my mind as well. I want to finish the books I'm reading right now before I get into Save the Cat. I'm reading Speak Akinawa and I'm also reading May the Best One Win by Z.R. Eller and I want to finish those before I jump into Save the Cat. And I do want to watch some videos about editing because I've never had to edit a book before. I have proofreaded my essays but that's it. I have not edited a full book but I do know the things that I need to change but I'm a little intimidated which is why I have not touched it and I just went on to the next idea I had. Now I was going to write and get stuff done but And my other issue is someone is in my bed. Hello, it is June 14th and I have had some unforeseen circumstances happen 
that have prevented me from really doing anything. I won't get into the details, but that is preventing me from doing any writing work. I Today's Monday, June 14th, and I finished up some of the books in my TBR for Readorama and Queer Lit Readathon. I had such a fun week doing that. I also want to pick up Save the Cat. Maybe I'll read like a chapter each. I was watching some videos of people reading it just so I could get a gist of what I'm going to be doing. From watching those videos, I learned that there are exercises in this book, so I will be just documenting me do this. I'm pretty sure in my running vlog I said I wasn't really going to talk about this book much, but here we are. I watched some videos of author tubers reading this book and I learned that there are some exercises so I'm going to document my experience reading this book and I will update you once I've gotten ready. I have started reading back my high school musical retelling and doing a lot of adjusting because I'm a visual person. I need to just know numbers and it has really been hard for me to put all the acts together just not knowing what length I need it to be. So I ended up doing some research and have done some math to make my manuscript 65,000 words because for young adult the word count is 65k to 80k. I think that I'll probably be meeting in the middle of like 70 but my goal is 65 just for the first draft because I don't think that this is going to be a very long book. It's only happening in a span of a couple months. It starts out during Christmas so the middle of December and then it should end probably in the middle of February so I think that this isn't going to be that long just because it's not a long time frame. So I will just see what happens with that. But I did start reading it and I am loving it. I am definitely making some changes already because in the beginning I didn't know how I was going to write it. I write in third person and as I was going through I saw a lot of things that were present tense when they're supposed to be past tense. So I just so I made some changes to that. A lot of writers and author tubers say that you shouldn't go back in your draft until it's done but I just can't work like that. I'm just better off making all of the edits as I go and I just think that that works better for me and it would help my mind a little bit to know that I don't have to do that for the second draft. But reading it back really helped me and made me love the story a little bit more. My first act is only 16 pages and that's how I knew I need some help here. So I have already put everything together and I feel a lot better now just that I do have the guidelines that I need. So I was able to put that into my outline so everything will be a lot easier and I actually like my outline. <laughs> Said no pants are ever but it's really helping me and I think it'll help way more with the story and hopefully this is progression as a pants. So I am going to reread my High School Musical retelling because I need to also add that I have changed the play to the Addams Family. Hopefully that is the last time I will change it, but don't quote me on that. Um, but I am totally in that mindset and I need to do more research on that. Um, I'm just such a pantser that I'm like, I need to just write this. Who cares about the other details? And that is not good because then I don't have to keep writing drafts. I can just go in and edit it and feel good about it. Um, but I do feel good about it so far. I've been laughing and just really enjoying it and I, I just love it. So now I feel a lot better about my high school musical retelling and having an outline is going to help me immensely. Even if I don't want it, it's going to help me a lot and just knowing all of the details is really helping which is just so ironic because being a pantser I don't want the details. I don't need them but I do need them because that is how you become an established author. But at the same time, I just want to write the whole story and not care about that. So I am learning to organize my thoughts and become more of a planner than a pantser. I still would like to work with an outline just so I can get all my thoughts down and a little organized. So that is my update. I will read Save the Cat 
and hopefully my next update will be me starting this and doing some exercises. June 20th and I have started Save the Cat. I have finished chapter one and I am really enjoying it. This whole book is about structure and I think I'm really going to enjoy it and it's going to be beneficial. The first chapter is establishing your hero. So I am doing an outline for both of my characters. I just put all of the questions that she gives you at the end of each chapter in a Word document and I'm just going to work as I go. And so far I have changed something in my high school musical retelling called the start of something new. So that's fun. I'm trying to build up to the climax and I need some details before I get there. Specifically if you know High School Musical there is the callbacks and there are two things that are preventing both protagonists from going to the callbacks. Troy it's his basketball game and for Gabriella it is her decathlon. But for me I have Jonah who is going to be going to a fundraiser for his LGBTQ plus club and for my female protagonist she's in a band and she's going to be participating in the battle of the bands and she has a lot of flaws and that is what we're talking about in this first chapter is your character's goal, what they think their goal is, and what their flaws are. And me writing my character's flaws has just made me laugh. I'm outlining for both books that I have and for Gabe from Breaking the Ice. I was just laughing because Gabe is very bitter and angsty and he just has a lot of shit going on and I have just added a lot of things that just make his life a living hell and it is just funny to me because I was putting his flaws down where he is very bitter and he is not one to I mean I guess I would say he's a little bit of an unlikable character but he does have some rage and he is just mad at a lot of things because of how the book starts out and he's just an angry boy and that is relatable on a lot of levels so I feel like he's one an unlikable character but also a relatable character because he's just angry at the world. Gabe is just snippy and he's always mad at everybody and he gives his sister an attitude. Um, he definitely needs development and I think that's what I'm going to focus on for my edits next month because he needs help. <laughs> Back to the book I have changed some things. I'm not going to say the things I've changed too much because they can be spoilers but basically I have created another scenario for the climax where both of my characters need to meet because once there's time for the callbacks, both of them need to be in like go mode. Step on the gas, they need to be able to get back to school for the callbacks and it is going to be just a wild ride. And so I needed to figure out what the scenario would be because Gabe is pretty nerdy and shy, but I wanted him to also be doing things with the LGBTQ plus club that I've created for him. So I decided where both of my characters are going to end up and it's so funny because I had originally that it would be a fundraiser of some sorts for the LGBTQ plus club and I decided oh why don't I put sports in there because I like sports and I want to add sports. So I decided why don't I do like a baseball game but I don't think that would work because who's going to be playing baseball in February? Not me. So I don't think that would work. So I've changed the setting and I think it really works because it's a familiar setting from Act 1 and I'm very happy with it. So, so far this is really helping me think more about my story and I am just outlining both books at once and I think this is really going to help me 
for next month when I do my revisions for Breaking the Ice because as I'm remembering and getting more into Gabe, I am just remembering how angsty and bitter he is and just how much I love him. Also going to be thinking more about what I need to change for the first draft. There's like a major point that I want to change because my antagonist, I guess, she needs some changing and I just need her story to be more complex because it isn't enemies to lovers or it's a childhood friends to enemies to lovers but I need to figure out why they hate each other because what I added I just don't think will be realistic and I don't really like that idea so I definitely need more brainstorming on that because I'm like okay Gabe is pretty petty what am I going to give him to just show off his pettiness? <laughs> He's just really petty and honestly, I love it. I really love his pettiness. So I need to do more of that, but so far my initial thoughts of Save the Cat are pretty positive. I just have a little bit of an issue because I don't know what both of my main characters' goals are. I imagine that at the beginning of Breaking the Ice, Gabe is like all ready for hockey season and then something happens that prevents him from playing hockey. And I'm having a really hard time with that because I know what their goal is as a writer, but what is their character goal? Like what is our goal as a character? Like what is in their mind? For Jonah, I think it's pretty easy. The start of the start of something new. Jonah is going to a new state, a new school, and he's living with his relatives. He has social anxiety and he doesn't want to meet friends. He's mad because he had a perfect time going for him until his house caught fire and his whole life changed. And now he is at a new school for the remainder of his senior year and he has to meet new people and he doesn't want to. So in his mind, as he is going into the new school year, he is not gonna meet any friends. He's just going to go to school, go home, and write his college essay and then get the hoe out of wherever he is. I think that that would be his goal. I think I'm just overthinking things, so I'm gonna talk to a few people about it. But for Gabe, I don't really know. His goals are definitely different. Um, just because obviously they're two different books, but Gabe, Gabe has some different goals in mind where he is going to have the greatest junior year of his life. <laughs> Both of my books start around like November, December, just because that's when I start writing them. I would say that his goals are to have a really great junior year, have a great hockey season, and hopefully get some scouts and be able to get captain at the end of the year. And that is all crumbling down as soon as the inciting incident happens. So his goals just tr change drastically. And so those goals are not even going to happen in the book because of what happens with the inciting incident. So I believe that his goals are way different. So I definitely need to think on what his goals are after the inciting incident because there's an element where he's faced with his enemy to do a school project. Um, so his goals are going to be to confront this person and basically tell her a piece of his mind. And that is definitely going to backfire for him because you just can't do that, Gabe. You cannot do that. But I do believe he's going to try and support his teammates as best as he can because of the inciting incident that I'm not going to say because it's definitely a big spoiler. But I just believe that I need to do more with the goals. So, so I guess I do know the goals as I've just said them, but I'm gonna write those down. So those are my thoughts on the first chapter of Save the Cat. I'll definitely update throughout the vlog, but I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to get back into everything because I haven't written this month much because I've had a lot personally going on that I just haven't been able to focus on anything, which is totally fine, but kind of annoying because I had some things I wanted to do. And if this is the first time you're hearing about Save the Cat, I will have a purchase link down below if you would like to buy it. Getting into chapter two of Save the Cat, it is June 21st and NaNoWriMo is in like less than a week. <laughs> yeah, um, Camp NaNoWriMo is next Thursday. So this book is 300 pages. And obviously I didn't prepare for a family emergency to happen, so I'm not gonna fault myself for that. But chapter two is the beat sheet, 
which is exciting. That's a very popular resource. So I have some of my tea in my Stanley Cup mug and I am going to get into it. I am using the Sips By tea. This is orange spice. I've never tried it before, so I'll let you know what I think of it. I always drink tea when I write. It just helps me. Coffee does not. Um, but I'm very tired today because I have just finished my video, which will already be up, where I actually reacted to Jessica Brody's bookshelf. I reacted to author's bookshelf, so if you haven't seen that video, it'll be up here. And I spent probably over 20 hours working on it. I've spent days on it because it was a reaction video. So go and watch it and give it some love if you haven't and you're interested in videos where I do fun things that aren't reading related specifically, but I thought that was a fun video and I had a lot of fun with it. So this is the beat sheet. I'm gonna get started. This is turning into more of a save the cat vlog than a writing vlog. This is about plotting and I'm excited to read about it because, uh oh. Something, <laughs> something's happening. Dude, this is game changing. This is what I've always needed. This is more like the 37 chapters outline, but this honestly I think is going to help me so much. And I don't know why I just didn't do this earlier. <laughs> Someone should have just commented and been like, Alex, please just do it. And I would have, but it's fine. This is going to help me so much. Like it's such a clear, concise, breakdown and this is exactly what I've needed. As for the tea, it doesn't taste as orangey as I thought it would. Um, I just put some milk in it, but I don't know. The flavor is not really enhanced, but I like it. I'm still drinking it. Okay, I know I shouldn't update or say anything until I finish the chapter, but I just have thoughts already. And if you hear something in the background, Leo got a balloon. Um, he loves balloons, so we got him one and he's playing with it. He's a weird cat, but I like this because it shows the percentages of everything, which is really nice. But I start my books with the inciting incident. Not many outline guides do that. They don't set you up for starting with the inciting incident because I would read a book that starts with the inciting incident because you want to know. And I kind of started off the bat with Jonah walking home from school and the house is on fire and so this is more like set it up and then have it happen but I want it to be like three two one it happens so that you're not like bored on the first chapter. We have act one right here and that starts with the opening image which I do have. Not every outline is going to work for everyone so I think I can get some use out of this. It just is my own writing style is writing the inciting incident first when the inciting incident should probably be like five percent in so i'm gonna get back to this i really like that it summarizes everything because this is exactly what i was needing like character development in this vlog <laughs> This is the last time you'll hopefully see my hair looking like Cody Co. <laughs> I'm finally getting a haircut tonight. It's been months. I wanted to update on Save the Cat because I am still on the chapter where she's talking about the beach sheet, but I feel like this book is attacking me as a pantser, but also helping me so much. Like I have just been tabbing everything. I have this post-it here to write notes on and I've never used it so I'm using it now and it's really helping me and now I just can't wait to get back into my book and I realize that I still need to like reread Breaking the Ice and then do an outline for it so who knows when that's going to happen because the book is 345 pages so that's probably going to happen either the day before camp 
<laughs> or something like that. So I'm hoping to finish this very soon, but I'm making my way through it and it is just so helpful. Honestly, I would recommend this book to everyone. It is so helpful and it's just helping me with a lot of things and making me realize how out of order my book is. I mean, I know I don't have to follow the whole beat sheet and I could flip around, but it makes a lot of sense and this is just what I've needed because it really tells me what I need to have in Act 1, what I need to have in Act 2 because my Act 1 of my high school musical retelling is 16 pages. When it should be like 60 or like 90 pages. It's 16. So that's pretty quick. That means like a lot of things happen and it's just like boom, 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 boom. And that's not realistic and that shouldn't happen. So this is definitely keeping me more on track and I love it. I think it's so great. I'm writing notes for Breaking the Ice and for the start of something new and it's just helping me so much and making me just excited to edit Breaking the Ice because I'm just so excited and I have a lot of things that are going to happen. But I also need to really focus on my female protagonist in the start of something new because I just am focused more on Jonah than I am on her and I need to give them both the same amount of page time and personality and I just have to spend enough time with both of the characters and I just have never written a dual perspective before so I just tend to like forget that I need to add her chapters so I am hoping that this helps me a little bit more with that but I do want to see if there's maybe any books or tips on how to write dual perspective in a way that it's not like you're seeing more of one character than the other even though Jonah is like the big part of the story. My female protagonist also has a lot going on in her life but this is helping me immensely and I am ashamed that I haven't picked it up before then. Like I should have started with this book before I even started Camp NaNoWriMo last year but better late than never. Just wanted to update. I'm only on act two but I think after this beat sheet part I'm gonna just go right back into my outlines and write a whole new outline for Breaking the Ice because Breaking the Ice I have followed the beat sheet but I followed it online and this is just more concise and detailed and tells me word for word what I need and it even shows like a little timeline it tells you what percentages you need to be at and that just helps me so much and I'm loving it. So I hope that this video has convinced you so far to read Save the Cat if you haven't. And if you're a writer or you are an aspiring writer, maybe you haven't written anything yet, my advice would be to read this book before you do anything. So I'm going to finish up the beat sheet chapter and I will be back probably with a haircut. I said I would be back with a haircut and I am. I'm loving it. I'm very happy. I love it. And some and some other good news is I finished the beachy chapter of A Save the Cat and I'm learning that I've actually done a lot. For the first draft of Breaking the Ice, I followed the beat sheet, but I didn't really understand it. And this just goes more in depth of what I really need to do. And I love it. And so I think today I'm gonna read Breaking the Ice and take some notes and start a draft because I'm gonna start editing it and I'm just so excited and I've just been talking about it and I'm just excited to be excited about writing again and while reading that chapter I also got some brainstorming done for the start of something new and I'm excited and I'm just glad that I've done this because this beat sheet is going to help me so much so today is breaking the ice day like I'm gonna go in and actually break the ice and get this done. i um, just gonna start it, not get it done. Um, I'm, so I'm gonna start today reading Breaking the Ice and actually break the ice and get into some brainstorming and a whole outline on what I need to edit. And I'm very excited. <music> Hello, 
it is June 27th and I'm here to wrap up the vlog because I started rereading Breaking the Ice and you'll see more of that in my next writing vlog. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet for Camp NaNoWriMo. Last year I did weekly writing vlogs so if you would like to see those comment a tent emoji down below or any camping emoji so I know you want to see weekly writing vlogs. I just want to gauge the viewership and participation before I commit to that. So whether or not I do weekly writing vlogs or not, you're still going to get some writing content in July. So make sure you are subscribed, you have my notifications on. So I did not finish Save the Cat and that's fine because I'll probably just continue it, but I really just wanted to know more about the beat sheet, which I did do. So I just need to finish the rest of the book but I just want to get into the editing part because Camp NaNoWriMo is in a couple days and I need to get this finished. So now I am on chapter three, page 29 of Breaking the Ice and I'm going to revise that. I have already cut over 2000 words because at the beginning of this, I was a pantser. Now I am a pantser with a plan where I actually have an outline that I will hopefully stick to, but I just have a lot of plot points that I don't use anymore so I just need to cut out a lot of that so I just put it in a separate doc called deleted scenes just because there are scenes that I actually like and I don't want to forget and not be able to reread. I do love this story. I love the characters and from page one I was laughing out loud. I was just laughing so hard because I just have a lot of like teenage boys who are also jocks and very aggressive and chaotic and, um, you know, those puberty. <laughs> I just have a lot of teenage boys going through puberty who are aggressive and they just love their friends very deeply and I was just laughing so hard. Just because these characters to me are hilarious and I'm just having a good time. So I'm excited to go back into it. I just wanted to end the vlog and say I have gotten to my destination where I'm rereading Breaking the Ice. And if you want to know more about that, you can watch my playlist of writing vlogs and I documented everything for this book last year. So you can go and watch all of that if you are interested in hearing more about this book. But I will see you all next month for Camp NaNoWriMo. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you do want to see weekly writing vlogs, comment a tent emoji down below so I know. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next month for Camp NaNoWriMo. Bye.